everyone. This is a short video to show you how to renew your license, whether this is your first time renewing your license in Louisiana, or maybe this is your 10th time, whatever. We understand it's every two years. So maybe you forgot a few things and maybe something has changed. So let's go through the process really quickly and let me show you. So right here, we are in a dummy account. This is not a real licensee. So you're not seeing anybody's real information, okay? On this first page, you're probably familiar with it. This is your My Info page. When you're getting ready to renew your license, this is a great time to take a look at your information, make sure it's up to date. I'm not sure if you know, but licensees are required via rule to update their information within 30 days of change, whether that's your personal home address, your mailing address, or your work information. So you wanna make sure before you renew that everything's up to date. You can actually do that yourself by clicking on this edit button. And right here, we can see the work information, I'm sorry, the personal information, your home information right here. So you can update all of your contact information. And then right here under employment, we see this person doesn't have anything added. So we can actually add an employer to make sure that this is up to date. Now, if you're retired and you're still renewing your license, that's okay, no problem. Just put the word retired in here and that lets us know what's going on. Maybe you're currently unemployed, also fine. Put the word unemployed right there. That's okay. All right, now let's say it however that you are currently working and we're just gonna make up a name here, okay? We're gonna call this Awesome PT. Um, we're gonna click over here. We're gonna select the, select the type. Let's say maybe that this is a rehab center, okay? And we're gonna put in an address. And make sure you update the parish. A lot of times this gets missed by folks. So let's make sure that we update the parish, okay? Put in your phone number. And make sure, this is important, people miss this as well. Mark this as primary employment, okay? You may have a secondary employment and that's okay. You can put that in too. But if you change your work information and you don't mark primary employment, it's not gonna update on the public side if you were to go and search for yourself through the search tool, okay? So let's save those changes real fast. And there we go. We've updated our current work information. So everything's up to date. We've got all that ready to go. We've looked at our contact preferences. This has been changed too. So if you haven't looked at this in a while, take a look at that, read that, and determine if you want to receive information or if you want to be able to be contacted by third parties, such as core sponsors, or you don't. You can take yourself off that list, okay? Now, let's take a look first at our CEUs here. So in order to renew, you have to enter your coursework. This one, we actually already have some fake courses entered. These are not real courses. I'm sure you can tell by the names, but we've entered some in to meet the requirements. So this person has their two years of ethics. They've got their, or sorry, two hours of ethics. They've got their two hours of jurisprudence. And then they have their minimum 26 hours of clinical or administrative hours. And if you scroll down the bottom here, you can see the CEU progress bar. This is a great tool that will help you see where you are in your progress. So It'll let you know if you're under your minimum hours required. It'll let you know if you're over, like this person is at 32 instead of 26. So they've got plenty of hours. So this one's ready to go. Um, however, let's take a look real quickly at adding a course if you need to know what that looks like. Maybe it's been a while since you've added a course and looks a little different to you. Maybe this is your first time. So we're gonna go in here. We're gonna select uh, the board here as a course sponsor. And maybe we're gonna select uh, this dummy course right here. Now you see right here in these course titles, it has the year. That year is the year that the course was approved for. If you select a course that was approved in a year that you didn't take the course, that's not appropriate. You should not do that. And if it gets seen on an audit, that will be a finding. So make sure that whatever course title you select, make sure this year right here corresponds to the year you completed the course, okay? So, Let's select this 2024 one right here. And you see the award year is already in here. It tells you how many hours it's worth. Now the month you have to enter yourself, okay? You're not gonna be able to change that award year. That's intentional. So let's say we just completed this last month and we're gonna submit that. And that popped right there into the courses. So very good. And it actually updated this as well. It became 34 hours instead. 
So that's how you add a course. If during your renewal period or prior to your renewal period, you're going to submit for individual approval. If you have a course that wasn't board approved, but you wanted to take it anyway and you want to get it approved to use as credit, then you'll use this right here. Now, let's go ahead and look at the renewal application and how to get there. We're going to go to the forms tab. And right here, we're going to see renewal application. We're just going to click on that. And that's going to take us into the renewal form. We're ready to go. We've already checked our information. We've got our CEUs entered. We're ready to move on. Now, you are still required to do the minimum data set, which is MDS survey. In this account, we've already completed that survey. You might have noticed if you've been licensed for a while, you used to have to get a passcode. You would actually go to a separate site, finish the survey, and get a code. You don't have to do that anymore. Everything is internal. So this is meant to make your user experience smoother and far less confusing. We understand at the time that was our best solution, but we now have a better solution. So you will complete that survey. You will actually stay in the board website's ecosystem. And once you complete the survey, it's going to get marked as complete. You don't have to worry about getting a passcode anymore. And you can finish that survey. You can log out, go do something else and come log back into your dashboard and it's still gonna say that you completed the survey. So that's a great feature that we've added. Um, so this is already done here, the MDS survey. We're gonna scroll down. We've already updated our information. We know that that is correct. We entered our CEUs. So we know that that's ready to go as well. We wanna renew as active in this scenario. So we're gonna keep that uh, clicked right there. And then at the bottom here is your notice to make sure that everything you're reporting is accurate, to the best of your knowledge, if it's inaccurate, you know, that, take a look at that. You want, this is the time to review that information and make sure that there's no mistakes. Um, right here, we have two attestation statements that we need to click. Make sure you read those beforehand. Make sure you understand. If at any point in this process, you go, I'm not sure I understand what's going on here. Give the board office a call. Let's talk it through. So if you're renewing as active, you're ready to go. You're gonna click continue. And then you're going to go like you usually do. You're going to complete these questions for the questionnaire here. And you're going to continue on. Actually, I have to click those. But basically, I think you get the idea. You're going to continue on through the application. And then you're going to be able to renew your license. You're going to pay your fee and renew your license. Real quickly, though, just in case any folks who are watching this might say, well, I'm not renewing as active. I'm renewing as inactive. I'm not recording continuing education. I'm, I'm not actively practicing in Louisiana but I just want to maintain my right to my license and renew it that way. No problem. You would skip the step about entering your CEUs and you're going to renew as inactive. You notice that these changes down here, you have a couple more statements that you need to make sure that you read and the mark is that you understand. And then just like the other people, you will continue through the application. You just won't be required to have CEUs to report if you're renewing as inactive. And if you ever have questions about what the differences are between active inactive, what's best for you, please, like I said before, give the board office a call and let us know. Let us talk you through that. But essentially, that's all this video was, is just to give you a quick peek at what it looks like to renew your license. And I hope that this helped you. If you have any questions, make sure that you reach out to us and we'll be happy to uh, guide you along your way. Thanks so much.